Here, the previously meniscectomized meniscus is probed. Partial meniscectomy will be performed in order to provide a bloody bed of this peripheral meniscus. The rim is preserved in order to provide an anchor point for the new meniscus allograft. Only the inner margin is removed. The intercolor notch is carefully debrided in order to improve visualization of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. If there is a prominent medial tibial spine, it can be removed. A cannulated drill is passed to the posterior horn and a suture brought up with a suture passer. The suture exits the anterior medial portal. Here, the second hole is placed at the peripheral one quarter of the meniscus using a guide. This hole is what secures the posterior corner of the medial meniscus. Here, the anterior horn of the medial meniscus is carefully identified over the edge of the tibial plateau and in line with the ACL. A guide wire is placed through the anterior medial portal, and this is overdrilled to form a socket with a 7 mm drill. A cannulated drill is then brought up from the anterior tibial cortex to this site. The medial meniscus, which arrives on the tibial plateau, is carefully dissected, usually with a small fleck of bone at the anterior and posterior horns. Excess synovium is removed. If a high tibial osteotomy is to be performed at the same time, this medial tibial plateau is, will be used as the wedge for the osteotomy. Here the posterior horn of the medial meniscus is dissected free from its insertion site. A number two tevdex suture is passed through the anterior horn and subsequently through the posterior one quarter and the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. The undersurface of the medial meniscus is marked with Waldenbach lines in order to identify the superior and inferior surface when the meniscus is brought into the knee. Here the guide sutures have been loaded through the tunnel sutures. The meniscus is then pulled into place through the small anterior medial portal. It should be noted that it's easy to twist the sutures and if this happens, it must be visualized at the time, as you see here in this example. The meniscus is pushed into place. However, it does not quite fit, ideally. And then when we look at the undersurface, the sutures have twisted onto each other. The meniscus must be removed from the knee, untwisted carefully, and then re-pulled into the knee. This step is relatively common. Here the meniscus is reinserted and fits nicely into the holes. It is then tucked into the posterior horn hole which was previously drilled and then sutured into place using an inside out technique. We no longer make large posterior medial incisions. We bring the meniscus needles out through percutaneous sticks in the posterior medial aspect of the knee. Additional sutures are placed along the periphery of the meniscus and these sutures generally can be retrieved through the small posterior medial portal. If necessary, additional portals are made as we progress anterior on the meniscus. A Caspari suture punch is used to further secure the anterior horn from the anterior medial portal. These sutures are used to close the anterior medial portal as well.